morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. This morning, I would like to introduce the service by uh, reading Matthew 6, 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. This verse speaks about our priorities, the way we set our, our schedule, our things in life. And God promises us that when we place Him at the center of our life, at the center of our agenda, He will take care of our time. He will provide time for us to do other things. Many times we, we lack um, prayer and we lack on reading the Bible, myself included, because we have so many things to do and we don't have the time. And sometimes I wake up and I say, Yesterday I didn't speak to my wife. Yesterday I didn't speak to the Lord. I was, I had to do this, this, and this, and that. And indeed, I was so tired I didn't even know I slept. And so, but then again, when we place Jesus at our center and we we make all other things around him, around around him, around our ministry at the church, around our 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 help that we should get get to, to the church to the house of the Lord the Lord will take care of our time he will provide time for us he will provide everything for us because he knows what we need and we shouldn't we shouldn't care for more than that because we have Jesus in our lives we have everything we have our lives Thank you. 
look at the heart of each and every man. So, reign into our hearts, O Lord Jesus, so that nothing can stray us away from the way to the eternal life, to the heavenly home that you have made a room for each and every one of us. Thank you, Lord. No mountain, no house seat, no high seat can ever stray us away if we remain in you, if we really are truly born again. Hallelujah. Amen.
Repentance is a must before we all turn into dust. Our life goes sweets and flowers. After all, he has all the powers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have a little poet here. So Grezio can have his assistant. Yes, yes. So for today's scripture reading, we have Diego, um, faith for prayers, and Masha, assistant. You lead us in prayers, Masha? Uh, it's all right. Good morning. It's a new day today that the Lord has gave us. Thank you for bringing us to church safely, Lord. Thank you for, for giving us for giving us a lovely day. Thank you for giving us what you need. Help, help, please help us to the exams now. Please help me get closer to you. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Today's reading is from 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 1 to 13. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things I have heard you say, in the presence of many witnesses, and trust to reliable men, who will also be qualified to teach, to teach others. And your hardship with us, like a good soldier of Christ Jesus, no one serving as a, as a soldier, he wants, he wants to please the commanding officer. Similarly, if anyone competes as an athlete, he, he does not receive the victor's crown unless he competes according to the rules. The hard working farmer should be the first to share his crops. Reflect on what I'm saying. For the Lord, for the for the Lord will give you insight into all this. Remember, Jesus Christ raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel, which I'm suffering, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. There, therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with, okay, okay. with eternal glory. There is a trustworthy saying, if we die with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also remain with him. If we disown him, he will also disown us. If we, if we are faithless, we will remain faithful, for he cannot disown himself. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So first of all, I want to thank each and every one of you all who are praying for, for my son. As, as some of you may know, um, last Tuesday, uh, my dog bit my son, he bit him in his ears, on his ear, and it was quite a bad bite. Um, so we took him to the hospital, his ear was swollen, and they were also thinking of doing a slight surgery. But, yeah, they gave him antibiotics, and I know that he's covered with prayers, because his, his swollenness has, has gone down now. Um, Monday we're going to take him again to the hospital, and we're hoping for, for good news. So, thank you. Um, thank you for your prayers, and keep, keep praying for Noah James. So, and this, this scripture in particular really helped me throughout this week, because there were some things that I thought that in my Christian life, they were gone. I thought they were being long buried. But it, it wasn't like that. Because during this incident, I, I became angry, I was worried, I was afraid, 
and uh, I was impatient and anxious and all these things. And really I was saying to myself, man, I thought these things were gone. But that's when the Holy Spirit started to minister to me through these words. And the first verse says, be strong, be strengthened in the grace of Jesus Christ. Find your strength in Jesus, in the grace of Jesus Christ. And that's, that's just amazing. Because as soon as I was thinking and how God is gracious, all that anxiety started fading away. All that fear, all the worries. And even Paul's, Paul's words to Timothy, the next verse says, Endure hardship. Be like a good soldier. Be like a disciplined athlete. Be like a hard-working farmer. And I was thinking on these three, three things. Man, if I want to be a good soldier, I won't be, I won't be compromising with, with civilian stuff. I would want to please the one who enlisted me. So, I want to please God. I don't want to compromise with the world. Am I being influential to others around me? Or am I being influenced by others? And that made me think, am I disciplined as an athlete? Do I exercise regularly? Do I read the word? Do I study? Do I pray? Do I meditate? And am I a good hard-working farmer? And a good working farmer, he tries, he eats the first fruit. So I must experience the love of God first, so that I can share that experience with others. I must show the fruits of the Spirit, so then those gifts will flow to others. Amen. And with these, with these thoughts, with these thoughts in our head, I, I want us all to examine ourselves before we go, before we partake in communion. And I want to ask these questions. Where am I getting my strength from? Am I of a good example. Am I enduring through hardship? Am I faithful? So, Lord Jesus, thank you for making forgiveness available to us. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for the cross. Lord, you can never deny yourself. And while hanging on that cross with a broken body, with your blood poured out, you were delivering out the plan for our salvation. Lord, thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you for saving me, Lord. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Let's all eat together. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. 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 So, today we have tithes and offerings. So, today we have a guest speaker with us. Let me get their, their names right. So, I would like to introduce Dr. and Mrs. C.B. Dewing, known as Chuck and John. It's easier. So let's give a round of applause to Chuck and John.
uh, car carrier ships, oil tankers, any kind of uh, ship, and we bring Christian literature, and we, uh, we take the seafarers to the mall where they, they eat, and our main objective is to tell them about Jesus, and uh, we thank the Lord for this, um, for this wonderful uh, ministry. Don't, don't forget the seafarers that come to your country uh, every day. We, we get up early this morning and came to the port and took a couple of pictures of uh, uh, cruise ships. There's so many uh, seafarers in the world that they need Jesus. And I just thank you for the opportunity uh, to, to serve him. Praise God. Uh, like us to stand again, and then I'll have to sit down for a while. Uh, I'm always amazed when we come and uh, visit in different churches, uh, especially know we're on target when the scripture readings line up with uh, what the Lord has laid on your hearts. And uh, I like us to sing this first reading that was given. And uh, it's easy to do without the musicians. It might be better with them, but we'll, we'll, be, we'll be with us again a little bit. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And uh, uh, let's sing it uh, unto the Lord with everything we got. Amen? See? Ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The second verse goes like this. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just lift your hands towards heaven and wash your hands. Bibles this morning 
uh, to the book of Luke, <clears throat> the Gospel of Luke. And we're going to look in a few verses in Luke uh, chapter 21. Luke 21. Now, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, in Matthew and 25, 24, in Mark 13, and here in Luke 21, we have what is called the Olivet Discourse. And it's probably the second most extensive, uh, next to the uh, Sermon on the Mount, uh, uh, a discourse given to us, uh, given to the disciples, in the answer, in answer to a couple of questions. What shall the signs of the end be like? What will, uh, what will it be like before you're coming? And then it's almost like Jesus uh, took out the morning newspaper and started sharing what's happening right now in our day. It hasn't changed much in the last 2,000 years. He says there'll be wars and rumors of wars, there'll be pestilence, there'll be earthquakes, volcanoes. We've been through several of those in the Philippine Islands. We lived there for 27 years. We've been through uh, typhoons, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, one major revolution in about seven coups, and we're still alive. <laughs> Praise God. And uh, God is still alive. Uh, but as we look at uh, the world around us, we see that all these things are coming to pass. And, you know, way back in the Gospel of John, uh, in the uh, John uh, 16, 33, Jesus gave this promise. He said, in this world, you will have trouble. What a promise. That's a promise. He says, in this world, you will have trouble, but be of good courage, I have overcome the world. So when we know the overcomer, we can be overcomers. And we can uh, be more than conquerors because of what Christ has done. Provided everything that we need uh, to do the work. When Jesus was on the cross, dying for us, our substitute, He died for us, we died with Him. Hallelujah. I uh, love the uh, hymn, uh, uh, It is well with my soul. And the second verse says, My sin, all oh, the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin, not in part, but the whole, was nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh, my soul. Well, as you read through the Olivet Discourse, as you read about all these perilous times, and you read about suffering in the church and in the world, you read that... Uh, uh, the, ch the suffering church is the majority of the church. We just had a conference in uh, Washington. Uh, we had about a thousand delegates, all from areas where uh, the persecution is the most extreme. Most of these brothers and sisters have seen members of their family executed right before their eyes. They've been through torture and imprisonment. And one leader got up and he says, the rumor is that the suffering church is surviving. And he says, I have to tell you, it's not true. The suffering church is thriving. And wherever you go and you find uh, this situation around the world, more and more these days, getting closer and closer, even at our doorstep, amen, we also find that God is alive and well. We also find that His plan and His purposes are being accomplished. We find that there's a there's a purpose in all of this. So you read this as you read these portions of Scripture at home, Matthew 24, Matthew 25, Mark 13, and this chapter 21. Uh, you begin to see the picture of what's going on. I wanted to zero in on these last few verses, verses uh, uh, chapter 21, verse 34 uh, through 36, uh, just to give us a, a picture of... Uh, the uh, first we understand that Jesus, when he died on the cross, and he cried out, It is finished! He wasn't saying, I am finished. <laughs> it was a, a finished work. But although there's a finished work on the cross, there's an unfinished work, wor uh, an unfinished work in this world. 
And you and I have been commissioned to finish the unfinished work. Some of us have been AWOL. Some of us have been lazy about it. Some of us, maybe we feel like we don't have the power or the knowledge and everything. Jesus said, all power I give unto you. In fact, he told his disciples just before he ascended into heaven in Acts chapter 1, 9, and uh, 10, and 11, as they're watching Jesus ascend into heaven, you know. And uh, uh, all of a sudden they see these two angels and they say to them, Why gaze you up into heaven? This very same Jesus is coming back in like manner. So we live in between the first and the second coming. Jesus is coming back. And he's coming soon. And much of the church has fallen asleep. Much of the church has become uh, lazy in this uh, 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 attitude that should be an expected anticipation of the immediate return of Jesus. If we had that in our spirits, we would be winning the world for Jesus. We would be finishing the Great Commission. We would be doing the unfinished work because the power has been given to us. Just before he ascended, he said, All power I give unto you. Tarry in Jerusalem, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, and you shall be my witness in Judea, in Samaria, in Jerusalem, in the uttermost parts of the world, all the world. You will be my witnesses. So this morning, I'd like us to touch upon three things in these few verses. The first thing we're going to talk about is uh, the day that we are anticipating. Jesus is coming soon. I want to get that into our spirits today because this is the message that the Lord has given me. Uh, the importance of understanding the soon return of Christ and the work of evangelism. They are linked together. Until he comes, we're involved in this uh, enterprise called evangelism, world missions, witnessing. The book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verse 11, I believe it is, it says, The fruit of righteousness is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. We want to be wise soul winners. We want to sharpen the instruments that he's given us. In Ephesians, Paul tells us that uh, when Christ ascended on high, he gave gifts unto men. We're not left uh, without equipment. Martin Luther said in his hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, the Spirit and the gifts are ours. Can you say amen? amen. They're yours. Take them. Use them. God's given us all gifts and abilities and talents. And he will apply to that that supernatural uh, emphasis that is so much needed for us to get the job done. You know? Thank God that we're supposed to be supernatural people. And it's God that does this. And he's the one who gets the glory. So here we read these few verses and make a few comments uh, this morning. And uh, uh, lay that together with the scriptures that we just read in Timothy and the scriptures on the seeking the, uh, 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 God's kingdom. You know, the second verse of that uh, scripture that was given in Timothy says that uh, we are to train others to train others. That's the work of discipleship. In Matthew 28, uh, when Jesus spoke to his disciples, he said, Go into all the world and make disciples. The imperative verb is make disciples. We're to be disciple makers. It's not just going out and handing out a track. It's not just praying with somebody. It's they become part of you and you become part of them and you build one another up in the Lord. That's why we must not forsake ourselves in the local church. This is the powerhouse. This is the place where God uh, organizes us as an army, as we mentioned about the soldier, uh, equips us, uh, maps out his strategy before us, and sends us out to do the work he's called us to do. And we're not to look at the next church. We're not to look at another country or any place else. God has a unique plan and purpose for a world of life. Can you say amen? amen. You believe that? Amen. It's a unique plan. It's a unique purpose. And it's a unique people that belong in these seats. 
to go out and do the work of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. So I'm excited about this, and I should get into this thing because I haven't even got to the introduction. <laughs> oh, praise God. But the three things we'll talk about. Uh, the day that we are to anticipate, the dangers we're to avoid, and the duties we are to assume in these last days. So we pick it up in 34. Take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the cares of this life. And the day come unto you unexpectedly, for it will come as a snare on those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things. And you, I, I'm, I'm going to skip over all these things so we'll be having a four-hour sermon. But you can read that when you get home. So much.